Every year, millions of people lose their hard-earned money to replacing failed electronics. Oftentimes, they are unknowing victims of PSU failure. Stick around and I'm going to show you how to protect yourself and others from this affliction for less than the cost of a cup of coffee a day for a month. What the heck is PSU failure? It is not uncommon for the PSU or power supply unit, aka the power adapter, to fail, making one think they have to replace their entire electronic device. I was recently faced with this situation and luckily I was equipped to diagnose the problem, minimize my downtime, and I saved over $400. And I did so by having one of these and having one of these. Now I'm going to show you how all of this works. Just know that if you have any questions, you can post those in the, in the comments down below. In the description, you'll find links to these so you can easily find them. Lastly, please support Toolbox DIY by hitting subscribe and then hitting that bell so you receive notifications. Okay, you see, power supplies, these power adapters, are typically cheap pieces of crap. I'm not going to lie. They're usually not made by the same manufacturer who made your device. These are outsourced and the lowest bidder wins. They buy them in bulk. What do they care? If, as long as it lasts the warranty period, if it fails and you replace your entire electronic device, they win. It's all about the Benjamins. And today I'm going to show you how to hold on to some of your Benjamins. Let's start with this intimidating looking device. This is a digital multimeter. It is used to take all kinds of electrical measurements. If you don't have any experience with electricity or electronics, this can look very intimidating. But don't worry, I'm gonna show you how to use it. We only need to know how to do one thing, and that is to measure DC voltage. You see, these power adapters output DC voltage to this barrel connector. And on these, there's a sticker that tells you how much voltage it's supposed to output. Okay, here's how we use a multimeter. First, we need to connect our leads. Black goes to black. We have two options for red. We want to use the one with the plus V sign. And we're going to set it to V. Sorry about the glare here. Now, with, when you set it to V, you'll see a squiggly line, which means it's going to measure AC voltage. We hit select, and we see a straight line and a dashed line, so now it's ready to measure DC. Now we plug in our suspect power supply. We insert the red probe into the center connector and we touch the black probe to the outer jacket of the barrel. I don't know if you can see that. I apologize for the glare. We see just some millivolts. That, that can't be right. Let's test a known good power supply to make sure we're doing this correctly. This is a 5 volt power supply. Same polarity, so same method. Let's see if I can do this with one hand. 5.01. So we know that that other power supply, this power supply, is bum. We know that we don't have to spend over $400 to replace my device. Now that you've diagnosed the problem and you know that you have a bad power adapter, you're going to need a replacement. And unfortunately that takes time. You have to find the replacement, you have to have it shipped to you. We, sometimes we can't afford that downtime. That's why I recommend having one of these around. This is a universal power adapter. Now these are a little bit more expensive, so I only recommend using these as a temporary replacement while you wait for your permanent replacement. Here's how these work. You can select from a number of voltages. You can also select different tips to match the tip that was on your original adapter. So I need 5.3 volts. I see here I have 5 volts, 6 volts, and then higher. I'm just going to go with 5 volts because that's the closest one. I'm also going to select the tip of the same size. With this, I now test it on my device, and if it works, then I know it was the power adapter that was bad and the electronic device was just fine. Also, if your universal power adapter does not have a tip that matches the size of your original adapter, you can always take your original adapter and cut it off. This power supply comes with a tip that allows you to insert wire leads. So we cut off the tip of our old power supply, we strip these wires, but now we need to know which of these wires is positive and which one is negative. Alright, we're going to set this. 
This is another function of our multimeter here. We're going to set it to the icon that looks like, a, like sound. It also has the Greek letter omega next to it. We're going to use this to determine which one is negative. So the outer is supposed to be negative, so now we want to know which wire is negative. And since it beeps, we know that's the negative wire. So this is our negative. We also have polarity marked here, so we want to put negative, positive, we'll just tighten those down. Okay, now it's time to find a replacement adapter. So I go to my old adapter and I look on the label. I want to look for the voltage, the current. I also want to look for barrel size. That's the size of this barrel. Some, some of the labels will have the barrel size, some will not. If they do not, you may have to measure this. Just know that it's measured in millimeters. One other thing you want to pay attention to is what's called polarity. That's the polarity of the barrel. Most modern adapters have positive in the center, negative on the outer. That's not always true. Usually it is also designated on the label. So you just want to make sure that you're matching polarity with the old adapter and the new adapter. It can sometimes be difficult to find a replacement adapter with online retailers. Due to this, I'm including a link in the description down below to an electronic component supplier that I use. They have a nice search tool where you input your specifications and they'll help you find that replacement adapter. All right, now that you know how to diagnose this problem, go get yourself one of these, get yourself one of these so you are prepared and enjoy keeping that cash in your pocket. I hope you found this useful. Please subscribe, like, comment, etc. As always, I'm Chris with Toolbox DIY. Thanks for watching.